Hi, welcome to this energy investment analysis lesson. This is going to be on some more advanced concepts on energy investment analysis. So after this lesson, you'll be able to do some time value money calculations using tables. So the reason we're doing going to be using these tables is because, unfortunately, you can't use Excel on the Certified Energy Manager exam. So I want you to get used to um, not having Excel with you. The other thing we're going to learn how to do is incorporate tax effects um, of depreciation into your cash flows. And then we're going to just apply those two things to um, two CEM practice, practice problems. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing is you're going to see here on the right side um, a table for, and it's, this table is called the time value of money factors. Um, so there's a bunch of different factors, but and it looks incredibly confusing. But it's actually not bad at all um, if you if you know what you're looking for. So P is the present value of money. F is the future value. A is an annuity. And all that means is the annual savings that repeat every single year. I is the interest rate or the discount rate. And N is years. So N is down here. I is the interest rate. We have F and P up here. We have A as well. The only thing I would say don't worry about is this gradient series um, columns. So we're just going to worry about these these here. And we're going to get used to using this table and uh, through a couple different examples. So first off, I just want to give you access to all the tables. And they're available here, but you'll just be seeing lots of snapshots as I go through this lesson. The other thing I wanted to point out is that these tables actually can be, um, if you don't have the tables handy, but you have a calculator and this page handy, you can calculate everything that's in these tables with these formulas. However, I would caution that these can you can make a lot more errors if you use these equations, and it takes longer to plug these in your calculator. So I would, especially for the CEM, get used to using the tables. Okay, so let me show you um, how these tables and equations work com and compared to what you've been doing uh, through the rest of this course. So let's go ahead and click here, and let's look at a couple different things. So let's look at this sort of practice um, problem, like what is the present value of $100 10 years from now? So this is a single sum, so we're going to look at the single sums column, and we're going to look 10 years from now. So that's why that's there. But first, I want to show you how we would do it with an equation, or how you would have done this before you knew the tables existed. So you can see that this, this equation is 100 divided by 1 plus the discount rate, 3%, to the 10th year. So this is just our present value and future value formula. Now, how we do it with the table is we get this factor, and we use that factor and multiply it by 100. So it's as simple as that. So that's what's sort of nice about this, is it does make it very simple. Let's do a little bit more complex example. Let's say you still have... Um, $100, but now it's a $100 annuity, or it repeats, so that you can see from the cash flow, it's $100 each year for every 10 years. And this is how we would get the present value. Again, we would just discount um, using the discounting formula for each year using the year. Um, so that's great, and then we would sum it all up. That's all this is. Okay, so now with the equation, so this is the equation from the slide, and I'm not going to go into it, but this is the equation from that slide I said that was used to make the table. And then from the table, again, now this is a uniform series. And we have A, so we're given A, we need to find P, so that we go down to the 10th year, and there's the 8.5302. And then we multiply that by 100 to get the 853. So hopefully you can see um, how these tables are, are very valuable. Okay, so let's go back um, and let's look at a couple other things before we jump into the practice problems. So uh, the first thing I want to discuss is taxes and how that can affect our cash flow. So the big thing is that um, in energy efficiency is that taxes sometimes allow you as a business to deduct fuel, interest, and equipment depreciation expenses. So taxes can sometimes be up to 50%, and um, so it's really important that we consider this um, in our cash flows. 
The other big thing is, and you can see this from the other thing, is that initial costs are reduced since the initial costs can be depreciated over the lifetime of the equipment. So we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll see that more clearly with an example. But the other big thing that, that you want to notice is that when you include taxes, you are going to be taxed on your savings from an energy efficiency project because that savings from the energy efficiency project is going to be added to your profits instead of going to your utility costs. So that's the big thing, and we'll take both of those into account when we um, do the um, examples. So how do we take depreciation to, into account? So there's actually all sorts of ways to depreciate something. So um, what we need to do here is we usually use straight line depreciation. And all that means is that every single year, you're going to lose um, a set value from your equipment, and that's what you can write off on your taxes. So that set value, D, is the purchase cost minus the salvage value divided by the equipment lifetime. So think about it like this. If you have something that lasts 10 years, and you're looking for um, D, and there's no salvage value, let's say your purchase cost was... $10,000 minus zero because there's no salvage value divided by the equipment lifetime, so which is 10 years. So that's $1,000 is your D. And you think about it, $1,000 over 10 years, um, you add all those up, it, it, and it adds up to the initial cost. So that is um, straight line depreciation. And that's what we'll be using in this course, and that's what's normally used in the CEM. Okay, so let's look at this problem. An energy efficiency upgrade has an installed cost of $10,000. It saves $1,300 a year for the lifetime of 15 years. The company has an aggressive discount rate of 25%. Should the company go forward with the project? So let's look at our um, spreadsheet again. And I have the practice problem solutions here. So this is practice problem number one. So this is what our cash flow looks like. It's $10,000 up front. And then it's a $1,300 savings for 15 years. Hopefully, you could do it in Excel by this point this way, where to get the present value, you just use the discounting formula with the 25% discount rate. And you discount all of it, and you add it all up. So in this case, you have a negative 4,982 um, net present value. So you wouldn't want to go through with this project. However, I want to show you also how to do this in two different ways. Again, you could use the equation, which is a long sort of formula, or you could use the table. So how do we use the table? Well, we have A, the 1300, and we want to find P. And it's for 15 years, and I, this is the 25% table. So over 15 years, it's 3.85926. So what we do is we take that negative 10,000, that's not discounted at all because it happens in year zero, and then we add the um, 1,300 times the 15-year discount factor, the uniform series um, time value of money factor. So once we do that, we get the same exact answer as we did down below here. So hopefully you can see now the power of these tables that you won't have to make these long formulas in Excel. That being said, these, these tables only work in very, very um, strict circumstances. So they're not going to be good for all circumstances. All right, let's go back. Let's go to our ne next practice problem. So for this practice problem, we're just going to create a cash flow. So ATCF is after tax cash flow. So this project costs $1.4 million up front. It's going to last 10 years and has an annual savings of 235000 And your tax bracket is 34%. So we're going to use straight line depreciation and have no salvage value. So let's go ahead and look at the solution. So we'll look at um, the solution here. So first off, this we can see again, this is how you would set up your tax um, after tax cash flow. But you can see right away, and I, I won't give away what I did in this, in this box yet, but you can see right away that it's not our normal cash flow because this is not the um, 235000 
that we had in our problem. So what do we need to do? Well, there's two things. So remember, when we were talking about taxes, there's two things. First, there's the taxes on the extra profit you're going to get from the energy upgrade. So you're going to get extra profit because you're not going to pay that in utility bills. So this extra profit is just the $235,000 of savings times the 34% um, percent tax bracket. So that's the taxes. So you're going to lose that money. However, you're going to gain some savings because you're going to be able to depreciate that equipment. So how much are you going to be able to depreciate it by um, per year? Well, the, um, the D in this case, there's no salvage value, so it's the initial cost, B3, divided by the lifetime, 10 years, and then times the tax bracket. So this is D, the B3 over 10, and the tax savings from that are multiply you multiply by your 34 percent so basically when we calculate this we've taken into account both e2 and e3 so it's the 235,000 plus the depreciation savings plus this extra um, tax so it's plus this minus this basically and that's where you get the 202,700 so hopefully you got a good understanding about how taxes and depreciation can af affect these type of problems and also how to do these problems manually instead of um, the long way with Excel. Thanks for watching.